in one of my previous episodes, the episode that I was doing the under check for the boats, um, I mentioned that you need to check the galvanic isolator. And this is the, the one in question, the galvanic isolator. So, and people ask me what it was, and I also say that I will make a video specifically on why do you need a galvanic isolator. So for us to understand why we need a galvanic isolator, um, I need to maybe go back to a little bit about noble metals and least noble metals. So noble metals, a noble metal, if we go back maybe even before that to an atom level, atoms is consisting about neutrons, which are electrons is running around, neutrons and protons, which can make the, 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 the core of the atom. And then around it is spinning all the electrons. And they've got very funny ways of spinning around it. So we're not going to go into those kind of things. But uh, the, the biggest thing is, if you look and look at the shells, and, and of course there's different shells because there's a figure eight and there's a round one and lips one and, and they all make all funny funny shapes and orbits around the core. But let's just for, for argument's sake say that we've got one ring on the outside. So the electrons is spinning on that outside, the outer shell, if you want to call it like that. If, the, if this atom has, say, five positions in the outside shell and there's five electrons, then this is a very, very stable atom. If there's one one electron missing um, then it means there's four of them spinning around the outer shell and there's gap for one more so it's easier for this atom to gain an electron in that one one's empty space than to lose four to actually make it completely that um, kind of like a equilibrium it's not really equilibrium but to say so it's easier to gain one to say, all right, we've got five and instead of losing four. The least noble ones is again the other opposite side. So it is, there's one electron, or there's supposed to be five, but there's only one electron spinning on the out, outer shell. And this electron is easier for this atom to lose this electron than to try and gain four to make five. So the noble ones have just one empty space and it will gain the electron while the least noble ones will have one electron and will easily give it away rather than to take four new ones. And this is what's happening with, with galvanic um, voltages and galvanic currents. So galvanic currents is the, the, the least noble one will leave, will give his um, electron to the noble one to actually receive the electron in that one space. So the electrons will flow from the least to the most noble metal. And this is what's happening between the different metals. If we look at this list of the currents, that's basically the, the electron load, if you want to call it like that, the potential for it to lose its electrons and potential to actually get electrons. So if you look at uh, the, just the electrical current that is possible in, the, you will see the top of the list is magnesium or magnesium alloy. So that one will sacrifice its electron a lot faster than the ones that below it. And if you look right at the bottom on the second page, you will see there is plutonium and plutonium is a noble metal and that metal will rather take an electron than to try and give electron. So, <coughs> If you look at this list, it is actually in that priority. The top ones will sacrifice themselves for the ones below them. Now, if you look at the voltages, we each one of these uh, metals also have a voltage. And the voltage is measured. There's a neutral way of measuring the voltage for each one. And <clears throat> this is the galvanic voltage that we're talking about. So again, 
the, the least noble ones on top of this list will have a negative voltage while the platinum has kind of like almost not really high positive voltage but there's a voltage and the current will flow between this from the high one uh, from the negative to the positive so the current will flow from the negative to the positive and it will flow again then from the magnesium to the platinum if you look at that so it will it will jump any metal that is above another metal will there will be a current flowing from the top metal to the bottom or the one below or all, all the metals below it <coughs> and this is why we have this so this is a magnesium alloy for the sail drives if you can look at that this is a sail drive um, uh, Anode, and we call them anodes because these guys will then easily release its new uh, electrons instead that your propeller for example will lose the electrons and you will actually basically lose your propeller because this one is sacrificing electrons and the more electrons it is sacrificing the more material and deteriorating the, the, this metal will start deteriorating so this is the reason why we have these things so again why do we have then a galvanic isolator if we have already nice sacrificial anodes that will actually give itself for the more noble metals. The thing is, if you are going to be connected in a marina to shore power, then this green wire here is going to be connected between your boat, shore power, and every other boat inside the marina. If it's connected to all the boats, they call it kind of like a galvanic cell or a big, big ass battery. And every piece of metal that is in the marina, in the seawater, in the electrolyte, will then start acting as a big ass battery. And you need to decide whether your boat is going to be a cathode or an anode or neutral. If your boat has a least noble metal like the anodes, the sacrificial anodes, or a brass propeller and the other guy has a stainless steel propeller, then the stainless steel, because it's on a higher, uh, it is a more noble, so it's lower on the list and your propellers is brass propellers or something like that and it's higher on the list or your galvanic insulators or the sacrificial um, magnesium alloy that you're going to use that is going to be then the least noble metal so the guy with the stainless steel propeller next to you will become a cathode and you will become the anode and all of your metals will go into the water because it releases the electrons towards his stainless steel propeller so you need to protect yourself against that so that you not become part of this battery if you part of the battery you will either be a cathode or an anode and if there's any steel boats around you that are stainless steel in the water then you will become the anode and this is why we have a thing like this because this thing is creating a big gap between your earth and the marina earth the thing is if you look at the this this green wire this is earth and you need earth every boat needs earth if you have 220 volts if you have 220 volts then you need to have this green wire wired in otherwise all of these little switches here will not work uh, this is the circuit breakers and things like that um, so you need a circuit breaker to actually detect that there's earth leakage and you also need the earth leakage and if if that has been detected then it will trap and you will be saved from electrical shock you, may, you will get a shock but you will not easily die if this thing is in place so this is why each boat need to have a green wire now if you look here there's a gap in between so if this device doesn't work anymore for example if 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 the diodes is breaking or something like that is breaking then there will be this big gap between 
uh, the shore power earth and your boats earth which again brings you into a lot of trouble so you need to make sure that your your galvanic isolator is adhering to a lot of safety boards and have the certifications for that and so on because if this one break you want this earth still to be working in a case of the ProSafe I think they're using also a, a capacitor because uh, the AC current is moving up and down up and down and because it is alternating it will also the the, the capacitor the, the plates will actually follow each other so this, the current will still go through and you will still be protected but this one is working with two diodes and also a capacitor. So two diodes in series going one direction and two diodes in series going the other direction so that the current can flow in both directions. So why do you use uh, a, a, a diode? A diode is for it to start flowing is 0 0.7 volts then the current starts flowing. So at 220 volt this one is perfectly working but the galvanic volts that we, the table that we just checked, um, so the galvanic volts, according to this table here, you will see that again, you will see that again, uh, magnesium is a very negative voltage, while platinum is almost, it, it is definitely a positive voltage, but it is just, just over uh, zero volt. So these, these guys here is a very negative voltage and the voltage will then, again, the current will flow from them to, to the positive. So that is sacrificing itself. According to this table, everything on top is more negative than one below it. And that is the, the reason why the, the electrons will flow. So what they do is they put inside this one, they put a circuit to have two um, diodes in series, which means it's 0.07 plus 0 0.07 and that will then make up 1.4 volt which most of the time all the galvanic currents or voltages will not go higher than 1.4 volt on a boat and this is why this is making it then safe so how do we test uh, a galvanic isolator now i know this one has a capacitor in because it has a capacitor, it has a, a few tricks up its sleeve. But normally what we need to do is we need to make sure that the shore power first is off. So we need to make sure the shore power is off. So ensure your shore power is off. And as you can see, there's no shore power here. So pull it out. And we are at anchor. So the chances of us having shore power is pretty slim. But we do have an inverter, so we need to make sure that the inverter is switched off. And the way that we do it is we just come here and we switch that one off. That's a short power there. And this one is the transfer, so it is now off. The first thing that you need to do is make sure that your IC power is disconnected from the shore. So unplug your shore cable and you you can even test whether there's any any voltage. So I'm going to put mine here on 400 because it's 220. Uh, so I'm just going to, I, I'm on anchor, but you can, you can also do it. You put it here on uh, 300 volts, volt IC. And then now I can measure between this point over here and that point, and it is zero. I can go to my neutral and I can also see it is zero. So there's no live voltage on SISU and it's, very good. <laughs> okay, so we off shore power. Then I'm going to put it at the at the least um, ohm meter. We're going to disconnect this one.
we're going to disconnect this one from and take it completely out of the circuit And one of the requirements is, is that it should be a ring and not a friction thing. So now this one is out of the circuit. I'm going to switch my, my voltmeter or my multimeter to the lowest voltage, uh, to the lowest resistance. I switch it to the lowest resistance. And now I need to, I need to check this. And you will see there's a brief moment when there is something and it just jumps up very high. So this means we've got uh, a galvanic isolator uh, device on this boat. If it was not and it was, it will go down to zero or very close to zero. If we measure between this, say uh, this green wire over here on this side here and you measure your your shore power wire and there's, there's no resistance, then of course there's a problem. But if you measure and it is like this, um, like that, then it will go to zero. The moment it goes to zero, you know that you're, or very close to zero, then you know, yes, you're, there is no galvanic device on the boat. Okay, since we do have one, we know now we have one, we can actually see it. So I'm going to put this device now on the, it is called the ohm testing. So you can see it's a little diode and it has a little peep. And if there's a short circuit, it will make a noise. Okay, so let's see the reading over there. I'm going to, it is now set for, if you look here, it is set for diode. So it makes the noise. If it's a short circuit, and if I press it over the two, you will see it. It has already a reading, and it goes to zero. And that means there's a capacitor inside there. We can reset the capacitor, so we reset it by short circuiting these two things, and then now it will briefly start, and it will count up, and. It's testing now the diode. So the diode is, is, that is basically millivolts that you see there, so it's 300 millivolts, so it's 0.4 volts already. And a diode normally start conducting at uh, 0.7. Because we have two diodes in here, it will start conducting at 1.4. If it doesn't, at basically 1,400. If it doesn't start conducting at 1,400, then, and it climbs to say 1,500, 1,600, you need to, um, release like re let it go otherwise it will it will maybe damage it so let's just see how far this one is going one three uh, one three three one three three seven so it goes all the way to <coughs> one point three three seven which is very close to two diodes in a series that is one point three four volts at this moment so it's one thousand three hundred and four 40 millivolts and this is how many 1.3 volts okay so I can now exchange remember the, the black was on top and the red was at the bottom so if I exchange now the two it will count down 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 or what I can do is I can just short it so the capacitor is now shorted so we will start again from zero and it will count up, 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 up. And hopefully it will stop at 1.4. Let us see if it's going to stop. If it doesn't stop, it means the diode is not working. If it goes only to, if it goes less than 1.4, like here, say for example 0.8, then it means the other one of the diodes is open and your device is not working. If it doesn't go at all, it means both of them is open and then you have a problem. So um, it has to be around 1.4 if there's two diodes in your device. 
there we go, 133 three is the same as the other direction. So it means both the diodes in both the directions is working properly. And this is how you test it. So in short, this device is making sure that the earth is still is still connected. So that if I do have working on 220 volt, then we are good. If we don't work, um, if it does break, it doesn't make a big gap in the wire so that you lose the earth capability inside your boat. So you must have that fail safe built into your galvanic isolator that if this device breaks, that you still have earth on the boat. Otherwise, that becomes dangerously, dangerously unsafe. But the main thing why it's called a galvanic isolator is there's two diodes inside. So from there is one diode, two diodes, and then it reaches there, and it reverses as well. One diode from there to there to, to there. So there's two diodes going from there to there, and two diodes going from here to here. And those two diodes combined, as you now just saw, mine is 1.337, gives you that voltages that actually makes sure that the galvanic voltage difference between any metals on this boat and the water, it will not start flowing. So my boat will not sacrifice any of our metals like the propeller or our zinc or the magnesium um, sacrificial anodes. It will not sacrifice any metal because of another boat which has a problem. That is the big thing. If you want to keep your nice, because you can have, you, you can protect all of your boat stuff. But if the neighbor next door from you has a problem, remember the whole big battery thing, we are in one big battery, then all our points that's going into the, into the water is either an anode or a cathode. And you would rather to be neutral in this whole, whole saga of the battery because this is what the galvanic isolator is trying to do to you, is making your boat completely neutral. If your boat doesn't have it, you become an anode or a cathode. So if you have these things, you become an anode and you sacrifice this. If you have a brass propeller and a guy next door have a stainless steel propeller, you will sacrifice your, your, brass, uh, your brass propeller before he will lose his stainless steel propeller. So that's, a, that's the reason why we have a galvanic isolator. Stray currents, don't, don't get confused with stray currents. This will not protect us against stray currents. Because a stray current is basically a short on any of these ones here, and that short will be much higher than 1.4 volt. So your anodes will definitely go very fast. Stray currents can be either on shore while you're at shore, so you can have a short on one of your 220 volt systems, or you can have two different different batteries and a uh, two starter batteries and the two starter batteries might not have a very good um, negative wire connecting the two battery negatives and because the maybe it's a thin negative wire and because it's a thin negative wire the batteries is is struggling to to equalize and then they will use the one propeller and the other propeller to try and get the equalization uh, running between the batteries. That means one of your propellers is becoming an anode and that is a problem. So that is a stray current and not a galvanic isolate uh, galvanic current. So galvanic current is just between dissimilar metals. It is a current between two dissimilar metals. Dissimilar metals. Between two dissimilar metals. Dissimilar metals.